Highgate Cemetery, officially opened in 1839, was once described as the most beautiful resting place in London. There are two cemeteries now, the one where Karl Marx is buried, has become a communist shrine. But the other, the older private cemetery across the road, is now a forest of graves. In the last few years, vandals stalking around the overgrown tombs have done over 9,000 pounds worth of damage. Statues have been swept from their pedestals and coffins disrupted and desecrated. But the general foreman of the grave diggers, William Law, who's worked here 23 years, it's worsened an already harrowing job. This plate glass type here is to cover all these concrete blocks here. That one there, that was smashed, the glass was smashed in there, and the band was got in there, crawled through, broke open the coffin, emptied the corpse out on the floor, and took the, the metal container which the body was in. But in the vaults of the old catacombs where Victorian families had their private sepulchres and the bodies of the long lamented were embalmed and set in coffins on the shelves, other kinds of vandalism have occurred. Down this part here, there's two tombs broken into. One on the left-hand side here, the doors were broken open, the coffin was half pulled over and a big iron stake stuck through into the coffin. The stake impaled the mummified heart. Other outrages were to follow, even more bizarre, even more violent. Last August, three schoolgirls came upon the decapitated corpse of a woman scattered across this path here, outside the tomb where it had laid for nearly a hundred years. A week later, the body was removed from the tomb twice in a single day. This desecration was utterly different to anything that had happened before in Highgate Cemetery. This time there was no lead missing from the coffin, and there were pentacles and other Satanist symbols chalked here on the walls. On August the 17th, the former associate of Mr. Manchester, Alan Farrant, who used to own this tobacconist shop in Highgate, decided to pay a midnight visit to the cemetery to combat the vampire once and for all. At the cemetery, Farrant was forced to enter by the back wall, as he still does today. He armed himself with a cross and stake and crouched between the tombstones waiting. But that night, police, on the prowl for vandals, discovered him. He was charged with being in an enclosed space for an unlawful purpose. But later, the Clerkenwell magistrate acquitted him. Now, in spite of all attempts by the cemetery owners to bar him, Farrant and his friends still maintain a regular vigil around the catacombs in hope of sighting either the vampire or a meeting of Satanists. We have been keeping watch in the cemetery for since my court case ended, and we have still found the signs of their ceremonies here. Have you ever seen this vampire? I have seen it, yes. I saw it last February, and I saw it on two occasions. What was it like? It took the form of a tall, grey figure, and it, about eight feet tall, and it seemed to glide off the path without making any noise. Well, I think they're nutcases, actually. That's my opinion. I mean, these people that come and do these sort of things, I mean, it's us, well, you can't really put the words what, you, uh, what they're really trying to get at. But I think the best thing to do, if we could catch one of these people to stop this nonsense, is to get, get one, put him in one of these tombs, and, and lock him up and leave him there all night, and see if, in fact, he can find a vampire. The owners of Highgate Cemetery, United Cemeteries Limited, regard Mr. Manchester, his society, and freelance vampire hunters like Parent as a thoroughgoing nuisance. The rituals, the publicity, the court case, have attracted to Highgate all kinds of undesirables who disrupt the tranquility of the tomb. In all their years, no grave digger here has ever seen a winged creature, a ghost, or a black magic circle. But so long as bodies are violated and pentacles chalked on walls, the cauldron of the occult will continue to bubble. 
Mr. Manchester and his associates count among the last surviving relics of an age when every flutter in the dark was reported to be a vampire.